Welcome to the Inner Princess Hole-in-One Guide for the brand new DLC course Labyrinth Easy. I am not the first to get these holes in one, but I am going to try and put this together as a bit of a guide for you. As ever, if you wanted to support the channel, please do leave a like for the video, drop a comment below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Well, let's get started now with hole number one. There are a number of different ways you can get hole number one. I choose to play off this left hand side straight up towards the cup off the back wall and in. So your aiming point is just here on the bank, it's into the first light shade, straight up towards the cup and back in off the back wall. As long as you miss that first corner on the right hand side when you're jumping up, you should be safe to be close to the hole no matter where it bounces. Hole number two needs a bit more chaos and is not very reliable. There are a few ways of getting up to the cup uh, and all of them need a lot of bounces. In the end I succeeded with this route off a stone to the right hand side and you're really just hoping that once you rattle it around you're up there and in the area of the cup so there's a chance it will go in. Hole number three uses a line that you'll probably want to try and do whether you're going for the hole in one or not. As long as you hit the wall on the left hand side around about the middle point there, your second bounce should send you safely up towards the cup and there is a chance it will drop in for the one. The margin of error is pretty slim here and of course if you do catch one of the stuck out parts of the wall, you'll likely send your ball back to the start again. Hole number four is absolute pure chaos, but there is a reliable route or fairly reliable route to get the ball chipped up heading towards the hole. You need a lot of bounces to get the ball up there uh, and this one actually luckily went in on a dunk but essentially what you're looking to do is turn right from the tee and chip it up off this corner and into the wall on the left hand side and then there's a chance it may go up towards the hole. And for the record this was definitely one of the longest ones to hit in this course. For hole number five you can do this one a number of different ways. I found the simplest to be playing off this left hand side wall. That gives you a line which cuts close and tight to that right hand side corner, but it will see you into the cup for the hole in one. Hole six is an interesting twist on a concept we've seen in Arizona Modern and recently in El Dorado, and that is to hit the ball softly straight towards a downward slope and it will take it towards the hole. Of course, now we've got these moving hands, so timing is important, but have a look and watch to see where the hands are in this video, and that should give you an idea of where your starting timing could be. Two things to remember here, get it straight and don't overhit it. Hole number seven should be with a bit of practice, the type of hole in one you'll be expecting to get all the time in your round. Of course we're aiming for this green mouth on the left hand side and your bouncing point is just on the corner where the ramp starts to go up. It's not a wide area to hit but providing you know what your line is you should be able to hit it consistently and the ball will drop in for your one. Hole number eight is easier than it may first look. Um, there's a bit of an unknown behind this obstacle, but providing your timing is right, the shot is more or less straight. If you miss the straight line, the ball will still end up on the green and in for a second putt. So really focus on not just getting your timing, but make sure you're lined up properly and you hit it with enough speed to make it into the hole. Hole number nine I think was the one that took me the longest and that's because I couldn't really decide on the best route. In the end I found that by playing it backwards you can chip it up and go straight through the sundial. That then, providing you've got your power right, will make the ball collide with the back walls around about the cup area and the angles allow for the ball to bounce around and end up pretty close to the hole. So even if this isn't a hole in one route, it might be a risky but potential hole in two shot. Hole number 10 is all about timing, but that doesn't mean that you should be neglecting the line. If you play off the penultimate stone on the left hand side and make sure that you're not going to hit any of these spinning obstacles, again you're putting your ball up into the general area of the cup and there is an opportunity for it to go in. It's not a guaranteed one, it's maybe not even likely, but if you're doing the timing part anyway, which is the hard part of the hole, you may as well pick a line too. 
Hole number 11, he is fairly straightforward, but what you don't want to do is leave yourself missing this to the left or to the right. If you really want to show off, do the backwards heel of the club putt and try and see if you can dunk it like I have here. Okay, maybe it's a one bounce dunk. Hole number 12 is interesting because there are definitely a few ways of doing this. I happen to hit this one by going over towards the stairs and to do that you want to chip up off the left hand wall before the ramp. That will throw the ball in the general area of the stairs which lead back down towards the green and there is a chance it will drop in like it has here. If you stay to the end of the video there are a couple of community hole in ones that I filmed in one of my first rounds after this course was released. I had the opportunity to catch live somebody hitting this hole in one and I've included that clip at the end of this video. Hole number 13 is another hole where you're already doing the timing part so you may as well get the line as well. By aiming just off the right hand side it sends your ball over into the left wall and that bounce fairly reliably puts the ball in the hole. So pick your spot, wait for the axe to be clear and you've got a chance at the hole in one. Hole number 14 needs a lot of chaos and the general idea here is that you're trying to get the ball over towards the ramp just above the final set of steps. To do this I went over this opening on the left hand side and just chipped the ball up into the air over towards where the pipe comes out. By doing this Yes, I missed lots of times and this is the one time it went in, but you're giving yourself a chance to be a little bit further down the course than when you started. You can make this one by going through the pipe, but I hit it maybe 50 to 100 times in practice and none of them went in, so it's definitely not reliable, but there is a possibility. Hole 15 is again not a particularly reliable hole in one shot, but this route can be quite useful for getting the ball up towards the green. Play to the left of the big centre rock that you see and with enough power your deflection will make the ball jump over the rock at the top of the hill on the right hand side. Once you're up in the green you may catch a lucky bounce like I've done here. I got an edge right between the steps which sent the ball into the cup. For hole 16 because the difficulty of this one is timing you must make sure that you've picked your line and your power so that you know when to take your shot. By playing just left of straight into this rock, you get the deflection sending it towards the hole, but you still need to be careful of the large hand coming round and specifically the tail end of it because that can send the ball backwards as well. So, when taking the shot, wait for the minute hand to be at the 12 o'clock position and then play it with just enough weight for it to come in and come down. Hole 17 is probably one of the most fun holes we've seen designed in Walkabout for a while. This changing gravity effect is something that you can have a lot of fun with. So on this particular hole in one, I tried to see how far I could get the ball to come back and slingshot back down towards the second set of steps. So see what other kind of fun ways that you can hit this one. The shot is more or less straight. So providing you get that bit right off the tee, you've got a lot of power options to work with. This is my take on the hole in one. I've seen a few different ones from the community and I really do look forward to seeing what else people can come up with. Hole 18 is another super hard one to hit consistently and in a round you're probably looking for the two by going down to the first level and then over towards the hole. I went at a rock over in the far corner. Apologies here, it's a little bit difficult to film the bursting of the glass orb. But with some fancy editing you can still get the effect. And we can pretend that that was all filmed in one continuous shot, right? Anyway, the target I went for was over into this corner and the rattle around sends you over towards that archway and if you get the power right, you get one bounce and over into the orb. Bonus points for spotting that discrete edit as well. Anyway, that's all 18 holes holding one. We've now got a couple of community clips that I filmed when Mac the Fife hit 12 and 13 back to back in a round with me and a few others. And then we have, of course, some outtakes. Oh, it hit the, did it hit the edge of the fence here? I mean, did it?
So thank you again for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please leave it a like. If you've got something to say or you've got a different route to suggest, please do drop a comment below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. We've just tipped over three and a half thousand. I couldn't be any more grateful for all the support I've had from all of you. So thanks again for watching and for subscribing, and I'll see you out on the course.